30 years ago, in the Melbourne seaside suburb of Frankston, Paul Denyer slaughtered three young women without mercy or remorse. The serial killer's crimes were so despicable, so depraved, it was unthinkable that he could ever be freed from prison. But as we reported two months ago, that was the nightmare prospect faced by the families of his victims after Denyer became eligible for parole. Now, however, their courageous fight to keep this killer behind bars is finally over, following an extraordinary shake-up of Victoria's laws. The families and friends of those murdered by serial killer Paul Denyer have endured three decades of pain and torment. This week, though, came a rare moment of relief. The victims' families told me about their experience of the justice system and, frankly, we can do better. And through this legislation, we will do better. Victoria's Attorney-General, Jacqueline Symes, announced a raft of legislative changes that will keep the killer behind bars for good. We are introducing legislation which puts beyond doubt the eligibility of Paul Denyer for parole. That gives ultimate certainty to the families who were victims of his unspeakable actions. What happened then? Before we had a knife and stabbed him many times in the throat. Right. Over a seven-week period in 1993, Paul Denyer stalked his prey on the streets of the Melbourne suburb of Frankston, savagely murdering three young women at random. 18-year-old Elizabeth Stevens, 22-year-old Debbie Freem, and 17-year-old Natalie Russell. And I had blood all over here, all over my hands, all over my hands, blood all over the place. Chillingly, Denya never showed a flicker of emotion. Denya was diagnosed with a sadistic personality disorder. So he has shown himself to take, take delight in other people's suffering, in hurting other people, in tormenting other people, in torturing other people. That's how he got his kicks. Two months ago, Natalie's brother, Darren Russell, spoke to 60 Minutes about the family's fight to keep the serial killer in jail. You have not spoken about this before publicly. Do you feel a need to do that now? It's important that we keep talking about this, that we keep it uh, in the public's mind. He was an extremely callous, dangerous, and I don't use this word lightly, evil person. We've got no reason to believe that's changed. As a result of an appeals court ruling, unthinkably, Paul Denyer became eligible for parole earlier this year. He immediately applied and was refused. But under the existing laws, Denyer could apply again and again, a prospect that filled the families of his victims with dread. Any part of you believe that he could be reformed? I don't think so, no. Victorian MP David Limbrick, the former boyfriend of Natalie Russell, spearheaded the family's campaign. This week, a breakthrough. We will do better for the victims of Paul Denyer, but we will also do better for more victims in the state of Victoria. On Tuesday, the Victorian government announced a suite of reforms not only to forever deny Paul Denyer the chance of freedom, but to give the parole board the power to keep 32 other high-risk prisoners behind bars for longer. Our goal was to make sure that um, Denyer can another, never harm another girl the way that he hurt Nat, and it looks like that's going to happen now with what the government's proposing. For the families of those so cruelly murdered, common sense has finally prevailed. I think history tells us that these individuals generally don't redeem themselves. And it's only when they're physically no longer capable of harm that we should be thinking of, of releasing them from custody. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia.
Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.